It was in the mid-1700s that machines began to replace manual labor and fossil fuels were first utilized by factories for their manufacturing purposes. The full impact of this industrial revolution was realized about a hundred years ago in the 19th century when the phenomenon spread throughout Europe, America and the rest of the world. This caused drastic increase in the demand of energy. Fossil fuels currently provide 81% of the world's primary energy supplies and account for well over half of the world's electricity supplies, that is 66.6%. Similarly, in Pakistan, oil and gas form the bulk of our energy supply mix. Pakistan imports approximately 350,000 barrels of oil per day. In the year 2007 and 8, the cost of our oil imports amounted to $11.38 billion. Till the time we utilize our coal reserves in Thar or solve the provincial differences in building the Kalabagh Dam, or re-energize our depleting gas reserves in Sui, we have to bear with the oil products that feed almost all our factories and our power plants. But oil, gas and coal products have their own issues too. Limited quantity, ever fluctuating prices, sulphur fumes, etc, etc. One thing is for sure. The human race will not just start living again in the dark ages one day without electricity just because we've used the last drop of oil or the last lump of coal. Oh. Well, to prevent this, we need a plan B. This plan B was given to us by scientists a long time back that there are alternative energy sources which are clean and infinite and we haven't taken them seriously. The Chinese obviously did. Investing billions of dollars in energy efficiency and renewables have made China a leader with 152 gigawatts of installed renewable capacity. Japan, Germany, Denmark, USA and many other countries are following suit. By the early 1980s, our government increased the share of renewables in the national budget in response to the increase in energy demand. And by the end of the decade, the contribution of solar, wind and mini hydel generation together amounted to less than 5 megawatts of power in the country. In 1996, this was the scenario. For research and development work, Pakistan Council of Renewable Energy Technologies was formed in the year 2001. Then came the Alternative Energy Development Board. There were agencies working, you know, but there were sporadic efforts, like PCRET and other you know, agencies were working in this particular field, but nothing was formalized. In the year 2003, I, once I retired from my previous assignment, I made a presentation to the, the then Prime Minister and it was decided that a board be formed to formulate a policy in this regard and then to ensure that you know, whatever target was given uh, is achieved. In energy scenario, I'll just tell you briefly that it was something like about 17,700 megawatts. That was the installed capacity, which is now at this point in time about 19,000. So, but there was always a shortfall. I mean, there were claims that we have surplus energy. A formal policy on renewable energy was launched by the government in the year 2006. The policy offered attractive incentives to independent investors willing to exploit this unexplored sector. But to date, Pakistan has not made a mark on the renewable energy map of the world. As Pakistan lies in the Sun Belt and receives a high amount of solar radiation, our early efforts were directed towards tapping solar energy. For solar energy, we were using um, the weather satellite that is over the country of Pakistan. It's called the Meteosat satellite. And the results show that uh, there are substantial uh, solar energy resources for, available to Pakistan. There's two maps. On the left side is the, is the uh, resource that's available for photovoltaic applications 
and you can see the western part, part of the country has the highest resources, but um, the yellow area indicates that throughout the country photovoltaic resources would work quite uh, favorably in the country. Um, on the right hand side is a map for the concentrating solar power resources. Again, uh, the western and southern portions of the country are the areas of, of most favorable resources for concentrating solar power technologies, and in particular this area up here um, in the northern section of the country is uh, highly favorable for concentrating solar power. For photovoltaic technologies, I mean, the, the, the number is very substantial because you could actually put the technologies uh, virtually everywhere within the country. Uh, so tens of thousands of megawatts of potential exist. In solar, you don't go megawatts, right? Because it's very expensive. But then there is solar thermal. You can go 500, uh, 50, starting 50 megawatts onwards, 2,000 megawatts, 2,000 megawatts. But have we made any progress in this area? To find the answer to this question, I started my journey. I came to know that the Pakistan Council of Scientific and Industrial Research have developed a special laboratory where they are developing solar thermal products. This laboratory is in Hyderabad and here I am in Hyderabad. Let's see what these people are doing in this laboratory.